Hiya folks, in this video we'll have a look at the three different methods that can be used for determining the focal length of a lens. The first method we're going to look at is called the distant object method. For this we are going to need a screen, we need a converging lens and we need access to a distant object, usually a window. On a bench in front of the window place the lens with the screen behind it. What we do then is we adjust the position of the lens until we get a clear sharp image formed on the screen. The image that is being formed in the screen will be inverted so that means it will be upside down. If we have a closer look at the screen what we should notice is that as the lens moves closer to the screen the image becomes sharper and more in focus. So you can clearly make out the edges of the window and you should even be able to see the large mass hanger that is sitting on the windowsill. What you'll notice about the mass hanger is that it looks as if it's upside down and that's because the image that is being created here is an inverse image. So if we look at what's happening um, in terms of the light rays, we have light entering the lens from a distance object, which means that those rays of light are approximately parallel. As they pass through the lens, they will converge towards a, a single point, which is called the focal point. So when we are getting a clear image on the screen, what we're actually doing is identifying the focal point. So that is the distance between the lens and the screen. The next method that we're going to look at is called the plane mirror method. What we need for this is a plane mirror, a lens, an object and a lamp. The object in this case is a small washer with a cross in the middle. What we do is we keep the mirror and the lens very very close and we move both of them at the same time. What we do is we move that closer to the object and further away until we end up getting a focused image of the object occurring on the object itself. So in other words the, the image is being projected back onto itself. If we have a look at this apparatus from a different viewpoint hopefully now you can see where that image is being formed right beside the object. So as the lens and the mirror are being moved together, the image is coming in and out of focus. What we're looking for is to get that image sharp and clear so that it's in focus. When we do that, we measure the distance between the object and the lens and this will give us the focal length. So the reason for this is as the light leaves the object, it enters the lens and it is refracted in such a way that when it leaves the lens it is striking the mirror parallel to each other. Now when it hits the mirror it then of course reflects back onto itself and so the light will now travel back towards the lens again parallel. Once it enters the lens it then refracts closer to each other again um, and when it does that we end up with a focused image right beside the object. So that's why whenever we measure the distance between the object and the lens this is the focal length. The final method that we'll look at involves measuring the distance between the object and the lens which we call U and also the distance between the lens and the screen which we call V. These are related together by the formula which is 1 over F is equal to 1 over U plus 1 over V. What we do for this experiment is for a range of different values of object distance u, we measure the corresponding value for v. 
and then from that we can calculate what the focal length is. There is a whole separate video on that that describes that method from start to finish. When we're getting a clear image, what's happening here is light is leaving the object, passing through the lens, and then being refracted towards the screen. And we're getting a clear, sharp image formed on the screen. So that's it. That's the three methods that we can use to find the focal length of a conversion lens. Use a distant object, use a plane mirror, or measure the distance between the object and the lens, and the lens and the screen. It would be a good idea to pause the video at this point and make a copy of this screen for your revision notes. It's important to understand the ray diagrams of how the light travels in each of these scenarios.